The Internet can be a scary place, and it's not just for fear of hackers lurking around every digital corner. The problem for far more people, cyber bullies. 73% of adult Internet users say they have witnessed online harassment. 65% of people between 18 and 30 have personally experienced it. And with thousands of photos and hundreds of minutes of videos uploaded to Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube and other platforms every second, there's plenty of material out there for cyberbullies to work with and plenty of places for people to get themselves into trouble, too. Those are the subjects of the new book, Shame Nation, the Global Epidemic of Online Hate. Joining me now are co-author Melissa Shore, also contributing editor at the Boston Globe Sunday Magazine. Melissa, good to meet you. And sports reporter turned chef Jen Royal, who unfortunately has plenty of personal experience in this area. Jen, it's great to meet you, too. Nice Thanks to so much you. for being here. I know the problem is immense. The stories you tell are otherworldly horrible. Give us a, just one sample of a typical horror show that someone had to live through because of cyberbullying. Okay, so there was a woman who posted on a blog and sort of got into it a little with an online troll. And he went on a vindictive campaign against her for years, would post things about her that weren't true, horrible slurs. She had a very unique name. So every time a, p a potential employer Googled her, there it would come up. She eventually had to um, put it, she had to talk to career, um, she had to talk to her career advisors mm -hmm. and uh, give them an idea of what happened in the backstory. And this was all because she just happened to post on a blog. She didn't even do anything intentionally. And there are a lot of worse outcomes we yes. can talk about. I mean, what happened to you, Jen, when you're starting in Baltimore mm -hmm. and then here and you're a sports reporter? Yeah, life? I think it started in Baltimore. It did start in Baltimore, actually. I was a sports reporter in New York. I had won an Emmy in 2008 mm -hmm. covering the New York Yankees. Born and raised in Boston. I came, went to uh, Baltimore. And, you know, they didn't like the Boston girl with the opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, I ripped their baseball team, but their baseball team was terrible. I had just come off a Yankees World Series, so I kind of understood why I was not accepted. But they ripped into me on Twitter and Facebook like nothing I have ever ever encountered By the in my way, life. some of the hashtags I saw today we can't say on the air. They're so grotesque and oh so Oh my God. I mean, I ended up, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I I mean, I had a nervous breakdown. I locked myself in the closet and was crying. And people would say, oh, she's on TV or she's got a tough life. She works in a locker room. She's with pro athletes all the time. She makes good money. She's pretty. She's this. It doesn't matter. How long ago was this? This was uh, 2010, 2011, 2012. Is this still PCU or is this is um, it gone from you? No, it's. I think it'll always be there because I, I always wonder what I could have been after Baltimore. Would I have gone to ESPN? Mm -hmm. would I, but I, I let it get the best of me, you know, for, for sure. But you fought back here. I want to talk about that just in a couple months. You have yeah. Monica Lewinsky, who obviously mm -hmm. knows a lot about this, who mm -hmm. writes your four, which is really powerful. Yeah. She talks about how horrible it is the term that bully side has become, mm -hmm. meaning being bullied and killing yourself. We right. all remember mm -hmm. the Phoebe Prince story in right. Western Massachusetts, cyber bullied and all that sort of stuff. You have other high profile, I'll use the term supporters. Mm -hmm. Does the fact that Melania Trump has mm -hmm. talked about this help or is she so compromised because of the fact that she's married to someone mm -hmm. a lot of people think is a cyber bully does she help the cause by talking I about i haven't seen what she has done yet to well be she honest. spoke about at the republican mm -hmm. national convention that pretty was a high, long time ago I know, but it was a pretty high right. profile platform right. uh, you know i think what's going on here is with the online disinhibition effect which is basically people will say things that they would never say in person face to face mm -hmm. right and monica who wrote our forward just came out with a public service campaign that really yeah, shows this right which is amazing. Um, but the truth is, like, Jen is a great example of this. People, adults can be cyberbullied too. This is not just something that we, you know, we think of it affecting our kids, and we've done a great job raising awareness about kids. You know, but adults can have their lives ruined as well. You, know, you said a minute ago people would say things they would never uh, say elsewhere. For those three of you who don't believe this, you may have seen this in the past, this is the Just Not Sports podcast team. They ask people, men, to read tweets sent to, just listen to some of these tweets sent to these women reporters. Just read the tweets, man. There's some mean tweets. Um, f*** this dumb I hope your boyfriend beats you. I'm sorry. Why bring up your own rape in this story? Is it your way of firing back at critics who said you can't get any? <sighs> That's something, huh? I'm sorry. I know you're not a shrink. What yeah. motivates somebody... I mean, it is as sick and sadistic. Yeah. What motivates? Why did they do it to you? 
Um, I mean, it can't be enough that you're with a Yankee report. I mean, with all due respect, I mean, that may motivate some yelling or something. Not this kind of thing. I mean, I told them their second baseman was terrible, and he was. And, you know, they would tell me to get a boob job and get a nose job, and we hope that your dogs die, and we hope that you die. And, you know, the Orioles doctor had put me on some anti-anxiety medication, and then I was very open about that, and they said, I hope that you choke and die on your pills. So they just, they just... It's just relentless. Must get short. You know, very quickly, because I want you to also talk about some solutions. Is online shaming ever, I'm almost embarrassed to say this to you, a good thing? Yeah. It humiliated Martin Shrelly, that drug, sick drug guy, finally convicted. Mm -hmm. It's humiliating Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. So there are pieces of this. Pieces of shaming can be used for good. I think we saw that with the white supremacists, right? In That's the a great point. They highlighted who those people are. And Jen does a great job as well. When she's been trolled, she will call out the people by name. And <laughs> well, let's start with there, that. Right? And she so, fought back. When you found out who's someone, when you moved here, yeah. is that something you'd recommend to fight? I mean, you got advice, ignore these people. I mean, you did the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I had four men. It was so relentless. They were like, you know, hey, Jen, maybe we'll see you in the North End. We know where Truman sleeps. Like, they, like, knew about my apartment and stuff. And they just called me every name in the book. It was so relentless. And I you had took them on? Well, I found out. I got an I got an email mm -hmm. from a woman who said, you don't know me. I know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. So I researched them. And then I tweeted the guy and said, like, hey, Joe, how's your wife, Carol, and your three kids, you know, Chris, Mark, and, and Steve. And they stopped, right? Stopped. Okay, even though right. it worked for her, right. quickly, Not would you recommend her. that? To be honest, what we did was we have a chapter called Six Ways to, to Fight Back Against the Troll. And I think Jen's a fighter, and what she did works for her. <laughs> which so would not works for, for me. Which Other people okay, might need to go and hide. Other people might need to do something different. So give two or three yeah. preventive things that people can do quickly if you can. Right? So you can try to... Do what Jen did and fight back. You can try to reshame the shamers, right? You can How just take a break. How about before the fact just, so it doesn't happen? You can just you go. Can't. You, There's, well, okay, okay, go ahead. You can just go dark for a while. You can just take a detox, just close your accounts, and just stay off the Internet until things blow over. You can. This has worked very rarely, but you can try to reach out to the people sort of empathizing and sort of say, hey, like, I'm a person, you're a person. Let's see if we can get beyond the trolling. And that has worked rarely. In 15 seconds, even right. though Jen said it can't be done, People can take some precautions. I'm not saying it's foolproof. I mean, you shouldn't be sending naked pictures of yourself to people, I assume, uh, that kind of stuff, As right? we saw in Duxbury here, which yeah, we cover in yeah. the book. Um, I would say, if I could leave people with one piece of advice, what it is, is it? just pause before you post. Think carefully what you put out there. It could come back to you. Well, let's see, the book's great. Thanks so much. Good Thanks, luck with Jen. the chance. Pleasure to meet you. Nice Thanks meet so much. You. Really appreciate Thanks for it. having uh, us. Thank you. Appreciate it. The book, again, is Shame Nation, The Global Epidemic of Online Hate.